Good morning, everybody. We're glad that you're here with us, and we're glad. This is a special Sunday, special Sunday, many aspects. Today, we celebrate the Pentecost Sunday. So we have, probably you have in your uh, bulletin, you have the, the flyer or uh, the insert about the Pentecost offering, and you got the envelope for the Pentecost offering. And as you know, we're going back. We're going to start to go back to normal as much as we can, but the offering is still on the box in the Nartex. So your offering, when you take your offering, the Pentecost uh, uh, Sunday offering or your regular offering, you put there in the box. We're still not collecting. We're not pace, uh, passing plates yet. But the session made some good decisions and important decisions for our worship here. Mask now is optional. So if you want to wear mask, you're more than welcome to wear. If you don't want to wear, you are okay. You're going to be accepted. As we don't have any problem with that. So, yes, the CDC said, okay, you, we're not kind of, if you were packed, a lot of people together. And then we decided to, to remove some uh, divisions on the pew. So it's, now we're going to try to keep every other uh, uh, pew uh, empty. So and we're planning ahead on the communion or something. But uh, this is what's going to, so we're going to, avoid to have a kind of a lot of a good group of people large group of people sitting together or that family it's okay so you're going to see those things uh, as we progress on this new challenge to move back to normal so please keep that in mind uh, we're still going to use the the sanitizers you're more than welcome to wear masks use the sanitizer gloves and Whatever, we, we are okay, no, but it's optional now. Uh, a few important uh, other announcements uh, for us uh, today is uh, this week, last week, uh, I, I, in my phone call, I, I mentioned that Lois would have a, a surgery, I think, that when is there something, and it was not. 
So she's going to have on June 9, she met with a doctor that week. I think that I, this is what the, uh, I thought that uh, she was having the surgery, but she mentioned that she was going to meet the doctor. And then I thought that was that, yes, yeah, she's going to have surgery. No, she met the doctor, and then it's going to be June 9. And we also ask prayers for uh, Joe Brubaker III, the son of our Joe Brubaker, and seems to me that the surgery was uh, good. So thank you for the prayers. We appreciate that. And yesterday I got email, and then I called Lena, and uh, I don't. I'm, she was diagnostic with uh, with the first stage cancer, breast cancer, cancer, and she already she was good, and she already started the process. Her daughter is coming. They are going to get another doctor and all that kind of thing. So, uh, but she is doing good uh, as much as she can on this under this circumstance, this situation. Please keep uh, her in your prayers. In your prayers. So it's so many things going on here. And of course, Chandler is not here. <laughs> And the internet, if you are watching us, thank, and please uh, send us a, a thumbs up here, and we appreciate that. Marta was trying to share, and then zoop, the, the thing disappeared, and uh, it was so crazy. But I knew that was there, and I know that was there, and I know that you were watching, so we're, we hope we're good. For those our family from our uh, graduates, uh, the, the service is uh, online, so if you want to... To get the, the movies, just go to YouTube, our uh, channel, Coco Press, uh, Coco Presbyterian Church in YouTube, and you can download the whole movie, the whole service. So that, uh, that is, uh, that's going to do. We hope and pray, right? And talking about the graduates, it's a uh, graduates uh, Sunday. We're so glad for the girls uh, to, uh, for this special event and Lori. We'll take over now. So, yeah. Good morning. Isn't it a glorious Sunday? Amen. Um, we have a lot to be excited about today. Um, before I start, I just want to mention that Hunter could not be here today. He's getting ready to go off to college early to play football. But we still have our girls. And we're going to start with um, Ashlyn. And what I would like for you all to do is, um, once I introduce you, I'm going to ask you what you're going to do after high school. If you'll just share a little bit about what college you're going to, if you got a scholarship, and then what you're going to do, okay? All right, Ashlyn. Um, I got a scholarship to go to Nova Southeastern University, which is located in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm going to be studying political science. And these three right here also graduated from Eastern Florida State College with their AA degree. I'm Mackenzie, and I'm going to Montreat College on a softball scholarship, and I'm going to go to school to be a physical therapist. I'm Autumn, and I'm going to UCF to the nursing program. <laughs> um, I'm Savannah, and I'm going to Montreat Presbyterian College on a softball scholarship. I'm going to be starting in the pre-med to hopefully become a radiologist technician. We have a little gift from the church to you all. And Pastor, would you come down and pray for the girls? And before I do that, I'd like to congratulate all the girls and the boy, right? We have uh, for this challenge. It was a challenge year for all of you and family, but you did. And, uh, and it, uh, we are grateful to God that uh, you were able to finish and now you started the new, the new phase. So 
Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the lives of our graduates. We thank you for their discipline, perseverance during this tough, tough last year. And now, O oh Lord, we pray that the right door will be open and they will be successful in the next step in their lives, O oh Lord. Bless them. Secure, O oh Lord, their lives in your hands. Open the right doors. Give them wisdom and help them in this new phase that they are going to start, O oh Lord. Give them wisdom, we pray, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, amen. Give them a, a hand, it's great. Congratulations. Let us worship, yes. Good morning, how about them graduates? Congratulations, guys. Please join me in the call to worship. God declares, I will pour, pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The young shall see visions. The elders shall dream dreams. Both men and women shall prophesy. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Good morning again. Good morning. Uh, please stand and join me uh, in our praise. Uh, shine, Jesus, shine.
That's one of my favorites. Thanks. Uh, please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy, Holy and, and merciful, merciful God, God, we do we not do know, know how, how to pray, pray as we ought. ought. And we know too well our constant failures to do as you have commanded and to hold fast to your word. Forgive us for the divisions we nurture. Guide us to your way. Keep us in your care and lead us into faith. We trust your word that the spirit of truth will show us all things and grant us courage and peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hear the declaration of forgiveness. People of God, body of Christ, sisters and brothers, the spirit of God's truth has come upon creation and upon you to interpret the mysteries of eternal time. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, Savior, we have forgiveness of our sins. Be at peace with one another because of God's mercy. Please stand and join me in hymn number 297, Spirit of the Living God. At this time, we're going to have our time to pray, to share with God our needs, the needs of our friends, family, the needs of, of our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, and some of prayer requests are, I already mentioned a few of them. Uh, then the graduates, to pray for them on their next uh, phase of their lives. Some of them are moving far away, some are moving closer, and I know that is hard for them and for the families, uh, so keep them in your prayer. So God will use them, protect them, and guide them throughout this whole process. Uh, and I, I, I didn't announce that, but we still need help in the tech uh, booth or the loft uh, but I, I move to the prayer request. You know what I mean? We're going to pray. It's not, it's not an announcement anymore. It's a prayer request from now on. So uh, Jesus said, hey, if you, if, you need, if you need servants, you need to pray for them. So we're going to pray. We need helpers. And I know that you can help or you know someone that can help. So and now we're saying, we're, now we're, 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 we're going to the next phase. Say, Lord, you know who can help us. So send that person to us. So this is what we're going to do. So please keep us uh, uh, this process, the whole thing, because we're, we're, we, 
we need to expand, and we're, we're moving in that direction. So please uh, help us praying for that. So let us bow our heads and let us bring before the Lord our needs. Heavenly Father, it is through Christ that we come before you, that we present our prayers, that we bring before you the name of people who need you, that we bring before you our needs, our requests. We don't have anything to bargain with you. We are counting on your grace, on your mercy, on your love. So hear, O oh Lord, our prayers and answer, O oh Lord our prayers we pray in the name of Jesus he taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Spirit of the Living God. Today we celebrate Pentecost, and this is the hymn that we are going to share. Spirit of the Living God. And the text are well known for all of us, Acts 2, 18 and 11, 15, and then 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, and Ephesians 5, 18. Acts 2, 18 says, Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Acts eleven fifteen. This is Peter done giving the report uh, uh, about the, the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, on the Gentiles. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. So they had the same experience. And then 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we are all given the one spirit to drink. Then 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And finally, Ephesians 5, 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, O oh Lord, when we can turn to your word and hear what you have to say. We pray that your spirit will be with me and with everyone who's listening so they, are, they will be able to understand what you have to say. Bless us during this time, O oh Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Daniel Iverson, that is the name of the pastor who composed this short and beautiful hymn. He was born in 1890 and died in 1977. He was native of Brunswick, Georgia. He received his education at the University of Georgia in Athens. It's interesting, when I was reading his story, I don't know if you know, but before I came to Coco, I was in Georgia, I was, uh, we coordinate all the immigrant ministries for three presbyteries, Cherokee Presbytery, Great Atlanta Presbytery, and Northeast Presbytery. And the office of uh, the Northeast Presbytery was in Athens, right in front of the university. So every month we had to go there to, to meet with the, with the executive presbyter there, and so we, we had the Korean church in Athens, so we had to connect with them and all that. So when I start reading this, I said, wow, a lot of connections with my experience in that corner of the world. And then he went to Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, and that I don't, I didn't, I don't have any connection there. But then he went to Columbia Theological Seminary in Decatur, and that is the seminary that I got my doctor degree. It's a Presbyterian seminary in Decatur. And then the University of South Carolina. He was kind of, man. He. So as a Presbyterian minister, Iverson served churches in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. In 1927, he organized a church in Miami, a church called Shenandoah Presbyterian Church. And then he remained there. Uh, until his retirement in 1951. And the late hymnologist, William Reynolds, provide the background for this song uh, of uh, Iverson. During January and February of 1926, the Georgia Stephens Evangelist Party conducted a citywide revival in the tabernacle in Orlando. Uh, Florida, and Daniel Iverson, a Presbyterian minister from Lumberton, North Carolina, 
spent several days in Orlando visiting with the Stefan's team. So he was connected with the team there that were doing the, the events in the, in the tent. On the day that, uh, the day he arrived, he was greatly impressed by a message on the Holy Spirit given by Dr. Barham, a physician from Columbia, Columbia, South Carolina. Later that day, Iverson went to the First Presbyterian Church in Orlando, sat down on the piano, and wrote this song. Miss Bertie Lowe's, the pianist for the Stephen's ministry and team, wrote it in a manuscript paper. And E. Powell Lee, the team song leader, was immediately impressed and taught it to the people that evening in the tabernacle and used it throughout the campaign. So that is the story of the spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Most of the time we know just this stanza, and, and, and I, when I was looking for, I just found that, and I did not know that our hymnal book and the, and, the, and the program that I have in the internet with our hymnal book didn't have that second stanza. And I was surprised when I got here, said, there is a second one? Give me a break. My sermon is done. I cannot go to the second one. So, but it's a Pentecost Sunday, right? Can, maybe I can start talking and talking, and maybe I'm going to get the sermon a little bit longer. I'm not going to do that, okay? Don't worry. I'm going to stick with my plan here is the first stanza that we're going to meditate, and we're going to stay there. And it's simple because it has the whole message for us. The whole message is there. It's a simple, small prayer. It's a prayer. All those hymns, most of the time, those hymns are prayers. They pray. They are asking the Spirit and God to do something in their lives. It's a prayer. And, and the prayer here is very simple. They are asking, this prayer here is asking the Spirit to renew and transform our lives. This is what we want. This is what, what he says. The Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. The Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. It's a simple prayer asking the Spirit to renew our lives, to transform our lives. And, and in this stanza, it describes the work of the Holy Spirit in our transformation, how that works. So let's see the lessons that we learn with this simple hymn about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The first thing that we need to learn and be sure about that, and sometimes we have problem with that, and it's not only us, it's not only you or me, but the theologians, they have struggle sometimes because when we start going to, to define how, who God is and how God operates, it's, it's complicated because God does not fit in our minds, and it's very hard. But this hymn here helps us to understand that He is the Spirit. He is the Spirit of the living God. So He is not just a force. He is not just a power. He is not a thing. He is a person. And He is the third person of the Trinity. He is God. And he is as much God as the Father and the Son and Jesus Christ. He is God. And sometimes we struggle with that because it seems that he is a kind of, a third kind of, third great God. It's kind of, yeah, he's a, yeah, there's a Father, there's Jesus, and then there's the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit is God, and he is the one who do all the work in our lives. The God plan, prepare everything, and then 
send the son. The son came, lived the perfect life, suffer, die for us, went to the heavens, and then he sent the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit that will produce the salvation in our lives. It's the Holy Spirit that will produce the Christian life in our lives. It's the Holy Spirit that will guide us, empower us, enable us, give us gifts and help us not only to live the Christian life, but to do the work that God is asking us to do. It is the Holy Spirit that is doing the whole thing. So it's very important for us to understand that. He is holy and active in our lives right now. It is the Holy Spirit. We are Christians because the Holy Spirit we're going to be able to do the work of God because of the Holy Spirit. There is no, no way, no other way. And he is, will do the work in our lives. The Spirit of the living God is very important for us to understand. Paul goes one step further on that. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit. Wow. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Some people use this verse to do whatever they want to do because, oh, the, the Spirit is here and I, we can do whatever we want to do. And so, sometimes you go to certain churches and they, you see people doing crazy things because they will, say, they will mention this verse here. They're going to say, well, where's the Spirit of the Lord? There is freedom. And then we can do whatever we want. No. Not like that. They missed the first part of the verse. The first, the first part of the verse is now the Lord is the Spirit. The Lord is the Spirit. The Spirit is the one who controls. The Spirit is the one who commands. The Spirit is the one who uses. The Spirit is the one who does those things and tell you what to do, when to do, and how to do it. It is the Spirit. He is the spirit of the living God. So we need to understand that. It's very important for our Christian life. It's very important. So that's the first lesson. The second lesson that we learn is that the invitation here, the prayer here is to renew our lives. Even though the language uses use a language like, and, and sometimes it's, it's complicated because when you use language to describe a, an a spiritual experience, sometimes that language is not kind of, don't give the whole idea or the right idea. And that is complicated sometimes. In this part of the verse here, and in this part of the, the sentence, it, it gives us the idea that fall afresh on me. It seems that the spirit is outside of me, and I'm asking the spirit to come in my life. And every time that I sing that, I'm, going, I'm saying this. I'm asking the Spirit to come like if the Spirit is something or someone outside my life. And it is not. He is not anymore. The day that you became a Christian, look what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 13. For we are all baptized by one Spirit in the body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we are all given the one Spirit to drink. The day that you became a Christian, you, could, you cannot become a Christian without the Spirit. It was the Spirit doing the work. The day that you became a Christian, the Spirit came into your life and He will never leave you. He's not going to go out and come in, go out and come in, go out and come in. It's not going to happen. The Spirit came and He stays. He stays there, and he stay there with you your whole life. He lives in you right now. Paul says that we are temple of the Spirit, your body. Now that you are a Christian, your body is a temple of the Spirit. What that means? It means that the Spirit of God lives inside of you, all of you. If you are a Christian, the Spirit is there. So if, if, if the hymn saying, come fall afresh and like if the Spirit is outside me, it's not. But what is the idea then? The idea is to ask for a refresh, a renew, a spiritual renew 
in our lives. Sometimes our Christian lives start getting dull, start getting dry. It's not the way that it used to be. It's not the way that it's supposed to be. And we don't, we, don't, we don't have pleasure anymore in going to church and praying and reading the scriptures and, and talking about Jesus. And we, yeah, yeah, it was good some time ago, but not, not anymore. The Spirit is still there. Yes, the Spirit is still there. What we need, we need a refresh, a restart, a renew. From the Spirit to help us to go back to the first love, as John says in the Revelation. Acts 2, 18 and 15 says, Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit on those days, and they will prophesy. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them, and He had come to us in the beginning. This is Peter saying, okay, this is the conversion. The conversion it was, the Spirit was outside and came. After the Spirit came, the Spirit stays. But sometimes, because we are we're still sinners, we're still struggling in life, and our Christian life is not the same that used to be, and we need a experience of refreshing, a spiritual refreshing, and that is the invitation, the invitation to renew our life. Is we're asking God to help us to come, to take over, to transform our lives. So this is what we are asking the Spirit. And then the, the hymn will help us to understand how the Spirit will do that. If the Spirit is inside of us, how he's going to renew our lives. Help us to experience new things again with Christ and, and, and with Christian life and our life and, uh, and renew our prayer life, our testimony and all the, the service and everything in our lives. How, the, how he's going to do that? His work of transformation, it, uh, the hymn help us to understand. He says, break me, melt me, mold me. Feel me. This is what we're asking the Spirit to do. Sometimes we do not allow Him to work in our lives. The Spirit is there. But we don't give Him room to work, space to work. We resist His work. This is why this hymn helps us to recognize our need for transformation and describes how he does that. He breaks us sometimes, yeah. Sometimes he needs to play hard with us. Sometimes he needs to melt us. And then he, sometimes he needs to mold us again and renew our lives. And sometimes he needs to fill us with his presence. Fuel us in a way that uh, we will expand and share his presence, his power, his grace, his love. Break, melt, mold, feel. This is a process that he used. We're not, we're not being used anymore. It's kind of an old vase that there is no use. What we're asking, break, melt, mold, and then fill again our lives. And this is what Paul wrote to Ephesians 5.18. He said, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And some people get that verse just to talk about wine. Paul here is not talking about wine. It's okay to drink. Let me put that way right. I don't want to get in trouble here, but it's okay. If you want to drink wine, it's okay. It's no problem. It's to feel the whole thing, to get drunk. That is the, the problem here. But what Paul is saying here is, look, I don't want you to get drunk with wine. I want you to get drunk with the Spirit. I want the Spirit to come inside of your life and control everything. 
control your, your way of talking, your way of living, your way of walking, everything. This is what I want. So this is what the Spirit will do in our lives. So when we pray this prayer, and this is a prayer, when we pray this prayer, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. And if we are sincere, and we say, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. He will do it. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray, O oh Lord, that the Spirit, your Spirit, will fall fresh on us will transform and renew our lives. Help us to be Christians in this world, O oh Lord. Use our lives. Bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the benediction. And before we receive the benediction, we're going to have the benediction and then we're going to send, sing the send off hymn for today. And before that, I just want to remind that we are going to have a reception for the graduates uh, outside, uh, down the steps, uh, uh, outside the sanctuary. So please stop by to congratulate the graduates and, 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 and bless them with your presence there. So let us stand up and let us receive the benediction. And now, brothers and sisters, may God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and renew and transform your life and make you a vibrant, active Christian, the day and every day of your life. Amen.